we're on our third week of what's really a complete risk on attitude. Um, we've, we've tried to not fall for this. Sometimes we've seen these head fakes, but it seems pretty legit since the uh, basically the month of November. So let's look at the last week. The Qs, right? That's a tech play. There's international, right? International has really not caught a bit all year. Now it's coming back. Financials, right? You've got to have cyclical sectors. Then you have discretionary. You've got Europe. That's been struggling all year. And also look down here at uh, value. Value is sort of trying to take over for low vol and uh, take over the factor world. That's another change. Let's look at the outflows to see what's coming out. Now, SPY is at the top of the list. Normally that's bearish, but I think this will turn green next week. I'm going to discount this for now. But I'm going to look at GLD outflows. That's again bullish. TLT outflows, right? These two really led sort of that safety dance, as Scarlett called it earlier. And also look at down here, USMV. This was the golden boy of the year, right? Now it's seeing outflows because value is trying to eat into it. So let's actually look at uh, low vol, gold, and fixed income, which is our safe haven ETF flow index, breaking them all out. And look at this. The first time in a long time, all three of those categories have seen outflows. So, Scarlett, investors are clearly shedding any sense of need to hedge this rally. So I'm almost ready to call it a regime change. Well, we've had quite a few of those this year. Let's bring in Dan Egan. He's Managing Director of Behavioral Finance and Investing at Betterment, and Vildana Heyrich, who covers ETFs for Bloomberg News. Welcome to both of you. Dan, you. it is back to risk on. The latest Bank of America Merrill Lynch uh, fund manager survey shows that cash levels are at six-year lows. What are you seeing when it comes to positioning among Betterment's clients? I think uh, one of the things that we can get caught up in is that retail clients, the people, a lot of the uh, sort of Main Street money will react a little bit slower than we would take for granted. And so one of the things that we're seeing is that the Fed has been lowering rate. That's trickled down through bank rates to the point where most people are seeing a 1.7% yield on a high yield savings account. Uh, the implication there is that customers are actually running away from an account that's not going to keep up with inflation and looking to take on risk somewhere. So I think it's less of a bullish indicator and more of a, oh, I have to get the yield from somewhere. Gotcha. All right. So that hunt for yield continues. Valdana, you reported on a story that looks at the rotation out of the safety trade and into riskier pockets of the market. What are people saying on whether this is fleeting or something more permanent? The majority of people I've spoken with are saying that it does have room to run. And it's really a function of improved economic growth, the U.S. and China coming to a trade deal. The Fed has cut three times already. Maybe they're engineering a soft landing for the economy. So a lot of people are saying we're going to continue to see cyclical value plays benefiting as more and more people start to jump into the stock market and try to keep up with, with its gains. So, Dan, one of the ETFs has been uh, really just climbing the leaderboard all year is BNDX. It's the Vanguard International Bond ETF. It also happens to be Betterment's biggest purchase of all ETFs in your last 13F. So, you know, this thing is interesting. Look, it ranks fourth in flows, but it's 36th in assets, so punching way above its weight. What is the appeal of this? Do people, did they not have international bond before? Why is this doing so well? BNDX to me is one of the, the greatest cases of the ETF industry really innovating and listening to clients. So what is BNDX? There were funds out there that would give you international bond exposure before, not as broad based and critically, not with a currency hedge built into it. At nine basis points, and I believe it started out higher and Vanguard has lowered the expense ratio over time, nine basis points, you can get exposure to all developed international bonds, all for fully currency hedged. And the important thing there is that without that currency hedge, this is a bond fund that has the volatility of a stock fund. Mm. With the currency hedge in place, it looks a lot more stable. And the returns have been wonderful. Actually, having the ability to have a diversified interest rate move basket works for clients. And perhaps they were diversifying away from the U.S. Vildana, you were looking at flows in and out of the vanilla bond fund, uh, long bond ETF, TLT. What do they look like? What does it tell us about what the prospects are for TLT? Massive outflows last week. We saw investors pull more than $1.2 billion from TLT last week, and that was a record week of outflows. We're continuing to see outflows this week. About $50 million has come out. Again, going back to investors betting that we're going to continue to see improved economic growth, the U.S. and China coming to a trade deal. So it'll be really interesting to to track that one going forward. All right, we're in mid-November right now, Dan, and we're approaching your end. And if you look at the 2019 stats, the numbers are pretty incredible for the major indexes. But at the start of this fourth quarter, I kept hearing from people about the December meltdown at the end of last year. You're an expert on investor behavior. 
Is there an extra level of nervousness that history might repeat itself this year? I don't think so. I think um, the real thing that we're looking at right now is that this is a year where a lot of mutual funds are going to be distributing capital gains to their holders. And if you can get out of a high fee mutual fund that's about to hit you with a capital gains distribution, now's a good time to do it. So I think it's a little bit more there's end of year stuff that investors are doing to prime themselves to be in a better position next year. Now, Vedano, regardless of the economy's prospects, there is a secular shift that we've seen into certain kinds of funds, namely ESG funds. What have you seen? Totally the opposite of what we were seeing from TLT. We're seeing massive inflows into ESG funds, about 6.8 billion so far this year, which puts it on pace for a record year of inflows. And it's about triple what we were seeing even just a year ago. A lot of retail investors like it, institutional players yes. are jumping in. But I do want to point out that the majority of those inflows are coming from just a handful of players, USSG and SUSL. Uh, Dan, you claim that ESG investors are better investors. Um, I personally think a lot of them are slacktivists, and they will leave as soon as the performance isn't there. Prove me wrong. What, what are you seeing? So uh, back when Henry Ford first started making his cards, he said, you can have it in whatever color you want as long as it's black. But you'd be surprised how much it matters to people that they can personalize and customize, put their personal stamp on their possessions. This works in the stock market, too. People are going to stick with, they're going to be happier with a fund that represents their values and interests. It might be a little bit of lipstick, but nonetheless, they're going to be better behaved and stick with it through down markets because they believe it's doing more good than just making money.